I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? There's another paid request, this time from Vante. And for those interested, if you want to request pretty much any type of review or a topic or a reaction or randomness or an article or a news piece or pretty much anything, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box if you want to. If not, no worries. This is for the 1996 The Island of Dr. Moreau, which Vanti wanted me to watch and review. Now, this is one of those films that the making of the film is so much more interesting than the actual movie. The actual movie is BS. The making of the film, I recommend, even if you've never seen this movie, which really you don't need to see the movie, but Lost Soul, the doomed journey of Richard Stanley's the Island of Dr. Moreau. Extremely fascinating. I wish more documentaries like this would be made. I really do. Whether it be on... Like... A lot, like I mean... So many movies have interesting stories. Even you know, do one on Cutthroat Island. Do one on like the infamous flops. For, throughout the years. I guarantee you there's a lot of stories. Like Sahara. That movie. I guarantee you there's stories about Sahara... Which to me is a, at best, mediocre action film that should have been much better, much more exciting. At least in my opinion. Okay, Richard Stanley was a director who had done some smaller films, including a movie called Hardware. Now, he was very passionate about doing an Island of Dr. Moreau movie. He liked the story. He wanted to do the film. Okay, maybe if you're able to get some big stars for this. And some one thing led to another and was able to meet with Marlon Brando. Uh, she talked to him and Marlon Brando said yes. Okay, we got Marlon Brando. Which in retrospect was a big mistake, honestly. Now, he was able to get other actors because they wanted to work with Marlon Brando. So, it was originally going to be Marlon Brando... Bruce Willis as the lead hero, and James Woods as the Montgomery, the jailer, the guy who worked with Marlon Brando's character. And again, Bruce Willis would be the lead hero. Pretty damn good cast. Bruce Willis, James Woods, and Marlon Brando. From the director of Hardware, which is a pretty decent movie. Then... Things changed. Bruce Willis. I don't know if it was a divorce he got from Demi Moore. Because I think that wasn't public till like 98. But this was like 95. Because the movie came out in 96. I, I don't know if that So I don't know if that was the case. Or something came up. Bruce Willis didn't do the film anymore. So. Okay. Val Kilmer. 
Val Kilmer had the success of Batman Forever. So that's how he got films like The Saint. That's how he got films like this. Oh, Val Kilmer, he's a potential box office star because he's the new Batman. Okay, let Val Kilmer be the lead. Then uh, apparently Val Kilmer is like, oh, my wife said we're getting divorced on TV. And then said, well, is there any way we could have it where I want to work less days? Okay, if that's the case, you can't be the hero. Well, Montgomery, the James Woods part, he has less. Thus, James Woods pretty much had to be pushed out, which maybe it was for the better. Although I'm thinking, why don't you just have James Woods be the lead hero? Why can't James Woods be the lead hero? I don't understand. He's done that before. Videodrome. He did a good job on that. The story in Cat's Eye. He did a good job with that. Uh, serious films like Salvador. He can be the lead. Just saying, but what do I know? He's a damn good actor. Cop. Go watch Cop. But no, apparently, John Carpenter's Vampire is pretty kick-ass in that. But they're like, nah, goodbye, James Woods. So who we don't get for the lead? Oh, this guy named Rob Morrow. Rob Morrow was on this TV show called Northern, Northern Exposure. So Rob Morrow's going to be the lead hero. Val Kilmer's going to be Montgomery. The, again, the jailer guy working for Marlon Brando. Richard Stanley's going to direct it. And immediately problems came around. Marlon Brando. This is a guy who. Do I think he's a good actor? Yes. I also think he's a very overrated actor. He's a good actor. But I think he's very overrated. I think he's a guy that many times people will tell you he hated acting. He, will, he would admit he hated acting. And then my point is, then just fuck you retire, Marlon Brando. But people kept paying him a shitload of money. And yeah, sometimes it was fine, like in Superman the movie. But... With a guy who you could tell just doesn't give a whole lot of fucks. On set, he would have an earpiece because he would not memorize any dialogue. Just read my dialogue and I will say it. And just did whatever the fuck he wanted. That's why his character is so weird in the movie. Oh, I want to ride a pip mobile. Not pip, but pulp. Pip. Might as well be. I mean, he's a pulp mobile. Be pasty white. Have a fucking hat that puts ice in it. Like an ice bucket hat. Have this little guy that's be his, his like mini me. Just Marlon Brando like the little guy. So the, him and a little piano while Marlon Brando's playing a big piano. Wearing these weird moo moo what the fuck outfits he was wearing. Because Marlon Brando, he didn't give a fuck about acting. He will say that it was a joke to him. Val Kilmer, complete dickhead. So many stories on so many films I've heard about Val Kilmer being a complete asshole piece of shit. And this one, I keep, he took a cigarette, I keep, he either burned someone's hair with it, or he put on someone's ear. I think he burned the hair. I think he had the cigarette, was burning someone's hair on the back of their head with a cigarette, and like he was fighting with Richard Stanley from the get-go, no, do this, do that, do that, do this, and kind of got Richard Stanley fired. And other stories, like the guy who made Jason Goes to Hell. Whether you like the film or not, I like the film. He did a film, I want to say it was Conspiracy with Val Kilmer. Might be a different movie. <clears throat> he does an interview where Val Kilmer was the worst piece of shit I've ever worked with. Because he would make other actors cry. Like he made one of my actresses literally cry because he was so mean to her. Why I hear that, I don't blame the director saying he's a piece of shit if, you know, when, when there's smoke, there's fire. You know, Joel Schumacher hated work with him. 
He says, some, I mean, uh, Joe Schumacher says some things about Jim Terry, but they did work together in the number 23, so obviously it wasn't that bad. But Val Kilmer, again, so many people talk about how it was, how bad it was working with Val Kilmer. The guy was full of himself, and to be honest, Val Kilmer, I don't mind as an actor. There are movies of his I like, Real Genius, for example. But it's not like he's one of the best actors either. He's fine. But I would say he's fine. He's fine. Yeah, I like him in Top Secret. I like him in other stuff. But this... I don't think he was that good in this. You could tell either he didn't give a fuck. He was running through the motions. Or just being weird for weird sake. Like out of the blue he's... Because he's a character that takes drugs. He just starts... Acting and mimicking Marlon Brando. After Marlon Brando's character dies, he just starts talking and looking like Marlon Brando. And you know what? Why? And then Rod Murrow, that's one of my few nitpicks with the documentary. I wish they talked more with Rob Murrow. Because I still do not understand how, in a matter of only like two days, how it was so bad. Apparently he called Bob Shea, the producer, and said, Please, please let me leave. Please let me get me out of my contract. Please, please, Bob Shea. Really? Two days? And mostly, like, bad weather? Really? Rob Murrow? You know what happened to me earlier this year, Rob Murrow? I was in this place for about, I don't know, seven, eight days with no fucking power. When it was the coldest of the cold, to the point, if you were in bed, you literally had to have a coat, a hat, and not freeze to death. That's a worry if your pipes were going to freeze. Because it's the worst weather in Texas. And then once in a while, the power would come back on. And, of course, what did I do? I did some reviews. Or I did some reviews with the battery, and then upload them when the power is back on. For like maybe 30 minutes. And then off for another 5 hours. Anyway. So I would like to ask Rob Murrow. What was so bad that after only like 2 days. I did please. What, what? What was it? What was it? Specifically. So I know I'm like 11 minutes in. I haven't talked about the movie itself. Because the movie's not as interesting. So Richard Stanley got fired. They got John Frankenheimer, who didn't give a fuck about this movie. He didn't give a fuck about the story. He was just hired to finish the film, and that's his job. I'm going to finish the film. He was a dictator type of director. Most of the cast did not like him because he just treated him like an, he wasn't being a dick. He's like, you don't do this, you know, just be, you know, a director who just didn't give a fuck. Do what I say or get the fuck out of my way. And then they got this guy, David Thewlis, to be the lead. Who is okay. Like, David Thewlis, he was alright. Yes, it would have been more interesting if Val Kilmer or Bruce Willis was the lead. It would not have saved the film. But, like, David Thewlis, he's okay, but I can see why he didn't really get a lot of lead roles. Because I don't think he has a lot of charisma. It's not that his acting is bad. It's just he, he just doesn't have the charisma it factor of a star. And his character, for the most part, is passive. Like, his character doesn't really do a whole lot throughout the entire movie. Except one moment where he tricks... One bad guy to do something to another bad guy at the very end. But for the most part, he doesn't really do anything. So when your lead is kind of just a bystander for 90% of the film. I would think if Richard Stanley actually directed this and followed his script, which apparently was much more violent, much more darker. And you tell with some of his films, much more visually interesting with shots and stuff. I'm sure Bruce Wells would have done more. Either heroic shit or something. 
or Valtel Mertep being the lead and was such a fucking dick with his fucking Edo. That's the name of his dick, Edo. Anyway, David Thewlis, he's on a raft. He's fighting for water. He's the last man standing. He d gets pulled onto this bigger boat. Val Kilmer's there. Takes him to this island saying, in a few days, we'll get you out of here. Immediately, Val Kilmer has a set of bunny rabbits. Breaks one. And of them. Has them hold it for some reason. And then. I swear it's like two days later. Before that rabbit is cooked for dinner. Maybe not. But it feels like a lot longer than that. Which made me go. Was that supposed to be sooner in the movie? But I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it was the same day. It just felt longer. I don't. Whatever. Fruza Bulk, who is in the craft, she's dancing. David Thewlis sees her, takes a liking to her. I don't blame him. Out of the blue, Val Kilmer says the line, yeah, she's a pussycat. Well, your mouser just told me, yeah, she's an animal, and she used to be a cat. This is the island of Dr. Moreau. It's not every day someone says, yeah, she's a pussycat. And just Val Kilmer being weird. Like putting flowers in his mouth and shit. When you have a bunch of people like Martin Brando didn't give a shit. Val Kilmer didn't give a shit. The director John Frankenheimer didn't give a shit. The people who gave a shit was Stan Winston. Who has some good makeup effects. He gave a shit. <clears throat> the people in the animal suits gave a shit. The people who had the costumes on. Martha Costos. Yes, Martha Costas is in it for a little bit, Sally. The few bits he's in, he uses body language and this face structure looks intimidating as his character, Lo May, who, he's the creature that they see feasting in the water a little bit. They have the trial. He's found guilty. He just shot in the head. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, kill off Martha Costas. Ron Perlman, he's in the film. <clears throat> like I said, most of the people wearing the costumes, they're trying. Like the one hyena guy who kind of becomes our main villain, he's trying. And again, the makeup looks good by Stan Winston and his group. Sad that it was wasted on this piece of shit. Because the movie doesn't have a great flow to it. It kind of just standing in motion. I know that doesn't make sense, but just like stillborn. It's like a movie that's stillborn, and you're wondering where are you going? Are you going anywhere? What's your fucking point? Can you get there somehow, some way, some form? And there, you could tell there was some weird editing stuff. Because, for example, a little bit later on, try to remember. Oh, the hyena guy, Val Kimmer's realized that the guy put his chip, guy's chip out. So it's Val Kilmer. With others, it seemed like David Thewlis either was with them or at least was watching this as they're hunting this hyena guy. <clears throat> then right in the middle, it cuts to David Thewlis and this other animal guy at the antenna trying to reach help. Trying to call out for help. And then... Val Kilmer arrives there going, yeah, you don't need this, this chip I put on my head. What do you think you're going to do? Try to get off the island? I'm like, weren't you just chasing some hyena guy? And wasn't David Thewlis kind of with you or at least watching? Now it's back to this. 
This bad to Marlon Brando with an ice bucket on his head? I mean, why does Val Kilmer... Well, because he's a druggie, but... It's, he was a druggie before, but why is he acting like Marlon Brando after Marlon Brando dies? And he's saying stupid lines like, I want to go to Dodge Heaven. He gets shot. Yeah, he gets shot for saying that stupid line. That's why they shoot him. <clears throat> this one random scene where David Thewlis tries to get on this boat. And then there's all these like little CG rat creatures. Which I swear there was one like ready to box them or something. They are, those creatures never pop up again, never show up again, are never brought up in conversation again, are never talked about again. This scene might shoot the scene, put it somewhere. Honestly, you don't fucking put that anywhere. And it really could. It could have been two scenes before, two scenes after. And by the way, it was awful CG too. Especially when you compare it to the really good practical effects that Stan Winston and his team did. And then Martha Costas, it made me go, why is Martha Costas wasting his fucking time in the suit that he has like three scenes in, barely any dialogue? It's just a waste of Martha Costas. Maybe it's like, I'll do it because it's my chance to be around Marlon Brando. I guess. Oh, the fruits of bulk, the things going ape shit. Marlon Brando's been killed. Val Kilmer's been killed. Fruits of bulk, they take, they hang her. David Thewlis, again, all this time, just weakling, either gets captured or is caught or doesn't do shit. Didn't seem like David Thewlis was that broken up about Feruza Bolt's death. And finally does something where he's like, Oh yeah, well, you're a god, okay? But you feast. he feasted on your father as well. Marlon Brando's terror. He did as well. So who are they going to obey? You or him or him? And then they start shooting at each other. Hyena gets wounded. Then he decides, fuck it, I'm going to kill myself, walk into the fire. And it's supposed to be dramatic. Why? Why, Father, why? Why, why? Why did you walk into the fire? Because you you're stupid. David Thewlis leaves. This one creature apparently seemed like really liked or was his friend. Would... They only bonded like one time and that was their initial meeting where Feruza Balk goes, look, it's a five finger man. And then this like monkey creature is like, oh, you have five finger men. That's like the only time they bonded. But then by the end, it's, the thing's like, please stay. I'm like, if you had actual scenes where it was hanging out with them and like, that would make a bit more sense. And then he tries to have this deep message of David Thewlis is narrating, you know, sometimes I think back to the island. And then also sometimes I look around at my fellow man, I'm reminded of the beast people. And so I walk, I walk into the future in fear. Yeah, walk to a Walmart bin for five bucks to find this movie. And if you see it, you'd be fearful and you want to throw it against the fucking wall. It's just... It's either ridiculous at times, or Marlon Brando, and all his shit, or just Pete Val Kilmer being a lazy asshole fuck, or directionless. This fella, it didn't know where he wanted to go in terms of story, in terms of plot. It's kind of just fumbling around until, yeah, we got some action, we got some explosions at the end, boom, the movie's over, and you just don't give a fuck. Doesn't do a great job going into deeper themes. It definitely doesn't do much of a job in terms of horror. David Thule's character is so passive and so inconsequential that it's not interesting. 
It's not badass. Don't give a sh much of a shit about him. Other than Stan Winston's competent makeup effects, people like Ron Perlman, Martha Costas wearing you know these makeup, being in the background, doing what they can. Yeah, this movie's just wasted potential. Wasted potential. Now, if you actually had Richard Stanley studio left in the fuck alone, they should not have gone Marlon Brando. It should not have gone Val Kilmer. It wasn't Richard Stanley that was the death knell. It was Marlon Brando and Val Kilmer that was the death knell. Because he had an actor who has a big ego and was fat fuck of a guy. I'm sorry. I call like I see it. And he didn't give a shit about other than his AC and his appetite. And then Val Kilmer, he cared about his ego and to be a fucking dickhead and I'm going through stuff so I'm going to make everyone miserable. Great, so be a piece of shit. And he was being a piece of shit. Because apparently Val Kilmer is usually a piece of shit. Some people don't get mad that I... Again, I didn't say Marlon Brando was a bad actor. I do think he's overrated. Just, I'm sorry. I look more towards Gene Hackman or Al Pacino or James Woods or such way I think of great actors. Marlon Brando, you know, Robert De Niro. Robert, Marlon Brando doesn't really come into play for me on the list. Maybe far, far down. Again, not that he's bad, but he's... Not worth the headaches and the drama, in my opinion. Especially at this time, he did not bring enough to the table. And it's not like people were going out to see Marlon Brando movies in 1996. Maybe back in the day of A Streetcar Named Desire, and then, hey, Superman the movie, would you use his name? Not in 1996. What, he was in what, Don Juan to mark the Johnny Depp film that barely anyone saw? I don't know, just, and Val Kilmer just, there's a reason why his career did not flourish after Batman Forever. Number one, he picked bad projects, but number two, being such a horrible person to work with, no one wanted to deal with him anymore. No studios wanted to deal with him anymore. And so his career died out. I didn't. This one, The Saint, The Ghost in the Darkness, which I would say is the best of the three I mentioned, they didn't do well. I don't know how he did on The Ghost in the Darkness behavior wise. But yeah, this, uh, and if you wonder what I'm looking at, it's to write a few names down. Just go watch the, the documentary on this. You get the idea what the movie's about. They show clips of the movie and it's a much more intricate, fascinating story. You get more meat out of the bones of that documentary than you ever would with this movie. So with that, and obviously killed the idea because since then no one's ever tried to remake this again. Maybe for good measure. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.